Welcome back to Let the Quran Speak. Now we discuss Orientalism. Edward Said popularized this term in 1978. He was referring to a body of scholarship that uses Eurocentric assumptions and biases in approaching other cultures and communities. Said said that much of academic scholarship in the West is Orientalist. Is this still true today? And what is Orientalism? What sort of manifestations do we see today? And how does one sift through the various prejudices and assumptions to come to a clear understanding of Muslims and the Islamic world? So, uh, Brother Shabir, maybe we can begin by discussing what Orientalism is. Yes, uh, in the Middle Ages and in, in pre-modern times, uh, the, uh, Europe uh, had a sort of hege hegemony in, in many parts of the world, and uh, the scholarship that developed uh, within that milieu uh, looked at uh, the what they referred to as the East uh, um, for the purpose of understanding uh, the peoples, the cultures, their religions, uh, but but also uh, with a, a certain uh, aim. It, it is claimed to. Uh, dominate that region. You, by, by understanding a people, you, you know how to relate to them, you know mm -hmm. how to conquer them, you know how to um, get the upper hand over them. So th this is basically Said's uh, uh, theory. So in order to dominate them, they had to sort of uh, demean them in some way. Yes, I mean they studied them as, as objects uh, mm -hmm. to, to think about how exactly to control them. If, if we go out from, what, uh, I mean a little, uh, if we extend uh, uh, the thought a little bit and we think about the translation of a certain uh, uh, law book uh, in, in the Indian subcontinent for example, uh, a famous Hanafi, book of Hanafi uh, detailed Islamic law uh, known as Al-Hidayah. Well, uh, it, an Englishman was uh, put in charge of translating the book, um, uh, Hamilton, and uh, he translated, he said, only those parts which uh, would be useful to the British rulers in understanding how to um, deal with their, their Muslim subjects. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, he uh, eliminated those parts which are detailed practices of Islamic rituals because that is of little use uh, to, the, uh, to the rulers. So here is a work that's, that's blatantly for the purpose of, uh, uh, of control and for governing uh, rather than just simply for understanding the religion or even for helping Muslims uh, to understand their religion. Mm -hmm. Edward Said uh, criticized Bernard Lewis. Um, do you want to discuss a little bit about his, his viewpoints, given the limited time that we have? Yes, he thinks that Bernard Lewis is uh, a, a part of the same wider phenomenon of trying to study the Middle East, in particular, uh, to explain to his uh, readers, uh, whether Jewish or, or others, uh, that uh, this is uh, how Muslims are. They are a violent people, uh, they, and they should be understood uh, not within the geopolitical uh, special circumstances, but they should be understood uh, as Muslims, and that uh, whatever negative things are being described about them is not because of their present circumstances, but because of who they are. This is how Muslims are expected to be, regardless of anything else. Mm -hmm. Now, is Orientalism the same as it is uh, in the 19th, 20th century? Has it changed? How has it evolved? Well, definitely things evolve over, over time, and uh, scholarship uh, by itself, many will argue, uh, has nothing to do with uh, military control or domination or colonization. It, it is just the pure uh, enterprise of uh, discovery and, and study. And to a certain extent, this is true. Nevertheless, uh, everyone has a certain bias, a certain predisposition, a certain position, a, a certain viewpoint, and a way, an angle through which one approaches a certain study. There, there has to be something of interest to you that, that you're going to pursue. And naturally, people from a particular uh, cultural background are going to look at another culture from their particular viewpoint and through their special lenses. So no one is entirely f free from this. At the same time, we can say that if Muslims study others, they will have the same sort of problems to overcome as well. They have to recognize their own biases and overcome those. Uh, so to a large extent, people have been now recognizing their particular biases and overcoming them, uh, trying to describe what they see from as neutral a perspective as possible. And so there has, to been, uh, there has been much improvement, but there is still some lingering uh, bit
bits of, uh, uh, sometimes it's uh, being described as Eurocentrism, sometimes mm -hmm. it's being described as Islamophobia, but this is still found uh, in the literature to this day. Mm -hmm. So w what are we to do with the literature? Should we um, re reject Western social sciences? How, how should we approach it? Well, uh, um, Al-Ashri, one of our great scholars, uh, had uh, learned the Mu'tazili principle, and then he used those principles to uh, argue against Mu'tazilism mm -hmm. and in favor of what came to be known as Sunni Islam. Uh, here, uh, herein lies uh, a, a, a very good model for Muslims to adopt. Rather than kick and scream against everything that is out there, uh, we need to master what is out there in order to then use the tools uh, to project that which is correct and that which is true about us. So it is important for Muslims to be educated like everyone else, to go through the university systems, to learn the methods, to uh, learn the, the method and modes of discourse, and uh, then to be the writers of scholarly articles and, and uh, to be the uh, authors of books and magazine articles and so on. So it's important for Muslims to produce their own scholarship? about their own selves then? Exactly. Muslims uh, should produce their scholarship about themselves and also uh, even about others. Mm -hmm. uh, wh why are we not studying others? Others have studied us, but uh, what's wrong with us that we do not study others? If we think about the scholarship that is being produced now in many parts of the Muslim world, uh, we, we don't find the shining examples of scholarship that we really want to read and can find the information in. To begin with, we read things that, that we feel are unbiased. And, and the writer has to project himself or herself as being un, uh, unbiased. The information has to be presented in such a, a neutral manner that you do not feel that the writer has a certain agenda that he's forcing upon you. That method of presentation has to be adopted for a start, for a start and Muslims have to use that method to study others and describe others as well. All right, thank you for that, Brother Shabir. You're welcome. We'll take a break. When we return, we answer questions we've received from you, our viewers.